smart glasses advice for people who wear glasses. I'm Tanya Hall, and joining me is Dr. Brian Wolf, optometrist and owner of Wolf Eye Lab of Baltimore, Maryland. Welcome, Dr. Wolf. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you for having us. Absolutely. Optometry in, is in your blood, right? So tell us about your family's story behind the field. So it's actually pretty interesting. My grandmother was the first female optometrist in Maryland my, and met my grandfather at optometry school. So the two of them started, and that was uh, a practice in Baltimore back in the 40s. And my father's an optometrist. And then I, of course, wanted to be an electrical engineer. So that didn't exactly take, and I switched gears and ended up being an optometrist myself. So I was the first third generation optometrist in Maryland. Well, technology's in your blood. So in fact, you've got some experience fitting uh, prescription lenses into frames for smart glasses. How does that work? So uh, the newest smart glasses that are coming out, all the technology that makes them sort of work is built into the frame of the glasses. Uh, but the part that makes the vision work, the lenses are still needed to be prescribed by a professional such as myself. And, and then there's a little bit of some technique in getting them installed properly into the glasses. And so that's pretty much what we do. How are smart glasses and VR headset manufacturers making it easy for people who need, like myself, vision correction uh, to use these kinds of products? Well, it's a little bit different. So with the VR headsets, uh, there's definitely been a uh, shift towards a larger headpiece, which is allowed to have the glasses underneath be comfortable and fit well. But to be honest, the VR headsets are having a little bit of trouble with the glasses, with fogging with just general comfort and just having two whole things on your nose and the weight on your head. So VR headsets are trying to be lighter and more comfortable, but the technology of virtual reality doesn't lend itself wonderfully to glasses wearing. So uh, would you then, you know, I wear glasses all the time, but I've worn contacts in the past. Do you recommend that somebody that's interested in, in spatial computing, virtual reality, or augmented reality who needs to wear some, some sort of device wear contacts? Contacts are definitely an option that can help eliminate some of the headpiece fitting problems. However, then you also get a dry eye problem with contacts as well. So it's a little bit of a catch-22 as to which one works better for you. Uh, we've certainly tried both. I've tried both. I tend to prefer to have my glasses on than contact lenses. Uh, but with the new augmented reality glasses that are coming out, such as uh, the HoloLens or uh, Magic Leap, they are sort of fitting around your glasses and fitting around your life uh, and, and sort of bringing the, the digital information into your vision more naturally. And that seems to be less of a problem where you have to wear this big shield over your face. It's more like you're looking through it and it's, it's a little bit more comfortable. Let's talk in more detail about that. If you, if you already wear glasses or contacts, which, which I do and you do as well, what should you look for in smart glasses or VR headsets um, when, you're, when you're shopping? Well, absolutely. If you have a chance, you want to try the headset on wearing your normal glasses. Uh, there is no question if it doesn't fit over your glasses in the store, it's certainly not going to be comfortable to wear at home. Uh, so I think that's the biggest one, doing a trial fit. Uh, depending on how uh, aggressive you get into the virtual reality world, uh, we can certainly sell you a pair of glasses that is smaller sized and framed fits better. We have uh, glasses designed to fit into motorcycle helmets and sporting equipment, which would be excellent for a VR headset. Just depends on sort of how far down the rabbit hole you want to go with uh, getting into VR. With AR, augmented reality, uh, either it's built into the glasses themselves and therefore there's no problem because the glasses are the uh, device, or it uh, usually fits sort of over the glasses uh, in a way that works a little bit more comfortable than, uh, than the virtual reality where you sort of have to put your whole face into the thing. And I think, you know, one of the questions that we are all interested in, certainly uh, as it relates to our health, how do optometrists go about becoming certified to install prescription lenses and smart glasses? Well, uh, part of the test to become an optometrist in the United States is a very, very complicated bit of uh, mathematics on optics and how the lenses work and how all the different technologies of the lens, which focuses the eye, uh, work. So just taking that and then kind of combining that with 
general computer vision syndrome, which is when, let me, let me digress for two seconds. Uh, human beings were designed to look far away. That's what we were built for. Occasionally we would look up close, maybe sharpen a uh, arrowhead or something like that, but most of our vision was based on distance. Now that uh, reality, now that things have become more up close, for example, we are spending a lot more time on computers, but even our entertainment is now moved to a handheld device, usually a phone or a tablet. We're no longer watching TV or playing video games far away. We're instead looking up close almost the whole day, and the body just was never designed to do that, and the eye gets fatigued, it gets tired. So I find quite often I have to prescribe, even for my younger patients, some sort of computer vision glasses, which help take some of the strain away. And then once they have those glasses on, you can add some sort of interesting features to them, such as anti-glare protection, blue light protection, some other sort of tricks of the trade to make the experience of wearing the glasses and working at a screen much more comfortable. Dr. Brian Wolf, optometrist and owner of Wolf Eye Lab of Baltimore, Maryland. If somebody wants to connect with you, Brian, maybe they've got questions about, I don't know, fitting themselves or their child for some augmented reality or virtual reality headsets. How can they do that? Uh, the best way to get in touch with us is to go to our website, uh, Wolf Eye Lab, all one word, and that's two O's and Wolf. And that's usually the best place to get a hold of us. Thanks again, Brian. And if you guys want to find more of my interviews, you can do that right here or go to tanyahall.net. Thanks for watching.